All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to um, use some of the STL files that you may, uh, might have downloaded off the internet or bought off of Etsy. Um, and I'm going to make a military insignia uh, plaque. And um, these uh, STLs I bought off of Etsy, I want to say I got all four military branches for I was 16 bucks or something like that. Um, and uh, and I'm going to show you how, how to use them. So we're going to create a new file. I know I want my plaque to be like 12 inches by 12 inches. I'm probably going to cut it out of three quarter inch pine and stain it. So um, this is good. The datums in the bottom left corner, that's fine because my wood's going to be square. Um, I think it's okay. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to import that STL. So I believe that is, uh, that's the bitmap. So we want to go to the modeling section. And under the modeling section, there is a import a component or 3D model. And now that is looking for all of these different formats. So STL being one of these, um, and prob probably the most common. Uh, the one I need to make today is uh, the Marines. Um, so we need to go to the Marines. We need to find the models. Um, and these are the STLs. Um, I've got two different versions. I really don't know what the differences between the two are. Um, so we're going to have to look at both. Um, or if this one's the one I want, then, then we're good. When you first click the STL, it's going to open up into uh, something where you can size it and position it because uh, not all STLs are going to be uh, made equally. Like this one is, is huge. This is my 12 by 12 here. And so this thing is huge and, and off center. You can see it's 248 inches by 21 inches. Now, if it wasn't oriented properly, I could use these buttons here to rotate it and flip it. If the initial orientation uh, let's say it was it was turned on its uh, right side or whatever. I could hit this button and that would move the right to the top so that it would be oriented correctly. Um, or again, I could rotate it if it was upside down. I could rotate it, um, but it it it, uh, it came in. This one came in the right way, but it's way too big. So the first thing I usually do is I just hit the scale millimeters to inches, which will bring it down. Um, to a closer size. <clears throat> and then I center the model, which will put it in the middle of my material. And then I choose my size. So I actually want it to be almost 12 by 12. So we're going to go like, I'll just make it 11. And you can see it's, it's locked. Because of this check mark, it's locked. So this one changed to the appropriate um, scale. So it's not stretching it. And then you hit apply and you can see it's still a bit too thick, but I can always take that down a little bit um, uh, later on too. I'm going to hit center again just because I resized it. And then we can actually look. It's very, these STLs are, are um, uh, take up a lot of memory. And so this interface here doesn't move very smoothly. Um, but what you can see is that um, where this gray is, um, it's, it's not sticking out enough. So you need to slide um, this guy down or up, depending on, you know, if you, if you need to move it up um, or if you need to push it all the way back. Now, if you push it all the way back, when you, when you actually go to... Let's say if I hit OK now, I'm not going to have anything in my model um, because I basically pushed my STL underneath my material and now there's there's nothing left of it to show. Um, so let's get rid of that. We can hit delete 
and let's do this again and let's just pick the second one just so I can see what it looks like because I don't really know what either of them are. I think they're nearly the same I think what the difference is is the thickness of the letters um, and I want the I want the uh, I don't see how these have these letters are really bold and thick I don't really want the thick letters so I'm gonna actually gonna go back to the other one I'm gonna cancel this uh, I'm gonna import the first one again you can wait and wait and wait okay and again, uh, you can see I'm way too big, but these are the thinner letters that I like. Uh, so I'm going to scale first, which takes a minute. I'm going to center. It takes a second. I'm going to put this to 11, which will scale it appropriately. I think I could probably go ahead and scale this, turn this off, scale this down to, let's say, 7. Let's see what happens with that. It should just squeeze it. And then I'm going to push this thing to the top. And so you push it to the top, and then that will give you the entire model uh, on your surface for you to work with. So we're going to hit OK. And then now when we're in the 3D view, we can see we have the entire model. And that actually looks... Um, really good I think that's fine if we uh, previewed it with our material you can see we should be we should be pretty good right there so now now that we have our 3d model in Spire and we're about the size that we want it to be um, the first thing we want to do is draw a vector border around it and that's this thing right here where it says create vector boundary around selected components so highlight the selected highlight the component um, hit your border which in the 2d view you can see now gives me a vector that I can use now when I do my 3d machining I don't like to you know machine the entire surface of what I've my wood because it just takes longer and it's a big waste of time and I also don't like to go just inside the exact 3d model so what I need to do is I need to offset this vector by I don't know let's say 0 0.1 let's take a look and see what that looks like so maybe a little bit more so I'll undo that we'll say 0.2 And so that's that's actually pretty good. Um, it just gives me some space between, but not all of this space. I don't want a 3D carve all of this. So this gives me a little bit of space and then the model. Okay, so then all you really have to do is, the way I do it, there's, there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, this is just the way I do it. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be making this out of uh, pine, as I said, and so I'm probably going to need the roughing toolpath. Um, I could try to do uh, a 3D toolpath, a finishing toolpath with my tapered ball nose. Um, I think that um, it might have some really deep areas in this model. So as I go all the way down to here, or even on the edge, um, that 3D, that um, tapered ball nose is going to have to remove a lot of material. Um, if I was using sign foam or something soft, um, and pine is pretty soft, so I, I may or may not do that. But what I do is I always create the roughing tool path just in case. I get out to the machine, I try the finishing tool path, and it's just too hard for it. I can switch over to the roughing tool path and then and get most of the material out of the way. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, quarter inch end mill is probably a good tool. Um, most of the time I leave all of these settings to default, but let's look at them anyway. The machining allowance, it's going to leave 0.04 left. 
after the roughing that the finishing tool path is going to have to take off. The strategy, uh, Z level or 3D raster, I, I don't really find a lot of difference between them. They both end up with a roughing tool path. Um, and then you, you, know, you can name it. Uh, 3D roughing is, is probably a pretty good name. So we'll hit calculate. Let's take a look. So let's go ahead and preview. Yeah, so that looks fine. So I'm a little worried about this area here because if it goes all the way through, um, then I'm going to be stuck with a loose board. So what I'll probably do um, is, is use double-sided tape as well as clamps um, just in case uh, I end up going all the way through. The double-sided tape will hold it just fine for the finishing tool pack. All right, so let's close. Let's go back to our 2D view. I'm going to use that same vector for my finishing tool path. And then I do like this uh, 29.029 tapered ball as my tool for the finishing tool path. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the offset uh, strategy. I, I like the raster better. I think it, it does leave milling marks, but they're, um, they're, consistent and easy to find for sanding. The offset, uh, you know, goes around in a circle and gets out and out and out and out. And it's just, for me, it just seems like it's harder for me to sand those milling marks than it is these. these. Uh, so we'll calculate. Now, this being about 12 inches, um, it's going to take a long time to probably run this job. I'm going to guess that's going to take uh, two to three hours. But let's preview, see where we're at. Yeah, I think that's going to look fine. I think that's going to be good when it's done. So we'll close. Next thing we have to do is now we have to pick the inside vector. We have to actually cut this out just in case it doesn't go all the way through. And it shouldn't have gone all the way through, but you never know. Um, so we're going to do an outside cut, but not with the 125. We'll use a quarter inch end mill and then I usually leave all the settings the same we're gonna go outside four passes is good actually no because we got to go down seven five seven five and six passes is fine that's not it's not gonna take long to go around this um, you could add tabs but if I'm gonna put double-sided tape on there I'm not gonna need these tabs um, I don't need ramps or any of this other stuff, the leads. And, I mean, I don't really get into leading in, leading out, that kind of thing in the order of the vectors. Um, I usually let a spire do most of that. Um, if I was doing aluminum or if I was using a regular router bit, I would add ramps um, because the regular router bits don't plunge very well. Um, but I'm using actual uh, milling, like end mills. <clears throat> I don't need this. And we can leave the name profile and let's preview i'm going to hit preview all just because i like to yeah and then it cuts out and that's what i should be left with and that is what exactly i want so if i look at the preview of the time yeah we're talking three a little over three hours or almost four hours to cut this out um and that's once i get to the what happens is when I get to the 3D finishing tool path, um, it's going to go at 60. I'm probably going to bump this up to like 80 um, because my machine can go that fast and it does not, it's not going to have that much material to take off. But if I start out with without doing the roughing tool path, then I'll want this to be at 60. So I'm going to leave it at 60. Um, Let's see real quick what the preview is for the roughing. Yeah, so the roughing is like 40 minutes. So if I skip the roughing, um, the 3D finish will take about three hours. Um, if I don't skip the roughing, then um, it's going to take me another 40 minutes. But if that takes me 40 minutes, then I can bump this up to about 80. Let's take a look and see what happens to my time if I bump it up to 80. So this is what I do a lot. I kind of guess, I kind of figure, um, 
kind of play with the numbers, see which is going to make the most sense. So I hit 80. And I'm going to close this. Look at this. So it's almost two hours. So I, I save the amount of 3D roughing time by by speeding up. So it's it's kind of washes out, if you will. Um, so we're probably going to leave this at 60, and we'll see how. Oops, cancel. I need to edit. I'm going to leave this at 60. I can always speed it up. I can always slow it down as well. Um, but if I start out at the number that I know works, um, then it's then I just have to bump it a little bit. All right, so let's reset the preview. Let's preview one more time. Just to make sure. All right, so I think that's it. We're going to save this job. Save. And we'll call this. Actually, I already have one saved. Uh, we'll just call this. Marines, maybe 11 inch. And let's save. I have to export my toolpaths as always. Let's save. Now, obviously, I'm using a different bit for all of these, so I'm going to need to um, not output them to one file. So we have the 3D roughing. I have my post processor picked, regular post processor. Let's save. Now I already have a G code for my for my smaller sign, so we're going to call this. We're going to put this in a separate folder. I'll call it G code 11 inch, just so I know, you know, down the road, if I need to make another one of these, I can just grab the G code and go. So hit save. I like this one. Hit save. It should be in my sync right folder. Finish and cut out. Hit save. Say one more time. All right, so that's it for Aspire. Um, pretty quick. To hopefully you you caught uh, loading in the STL. Um, in the, another couple of videos, I'm going to do some rotary machining. So I'm actually going to load a a full model STL that's got uh, um, you know uh, basically it's a 3D model, and I'm going to machine it on the rotary axis. Um, that's a completely different beast. And so we'll get to that in another couple of videos, and let's get this G-code out to the machine and, uh, and uh, carve this out. All right, see you in a minute.